Hey guys, my name is Micah Plemons and I'm Armour here at Tactical Kinetics and today we're going to be talking about how to build an upper receiver. The AR-15 is arguably one of the most built at home firearms on the market today. There are several different options when it comes to building one up for yourself. While the options are endless as to what parts you can use for your build, the steps to take in building your own unique upper receiver are essentially the same across the board. Today I will discuss the components needed for your build and the steps to take while building your upper receiver. Tools, AR-15 bench block, torque wrench, upper action rod, bolt carrier group, small hammer, punches, vise, and the components we will be using is the upper receiver assembly, barrel, barrel nut, gas tube, gas block, handguard, muzzle device, and crush washer. And here are the steps we will be taking. Step one, upper receiver assembly. The first thing we will start with is assembling the upper receiver. This will include the installment of the forward assist and the dust cover. The forward assist helps ensure that the bolt is seated and the dust cover helps prevent debris from clogging up the inside of the receiver. While these components are common with the AR receivers, they are not crucial to the functionality of your receiver. So manufacturers do not make a receiver with the forward assist and or dust cover. If this is the case with your upper receiver, then don't worry you will have fewer steps to perform. For the rest of us, this is what the assembly looks like. First step, lay out the components in front of you. We will start with the forward assist. The forward assist is made up of three components, the button, the spring, and the roll pin. The spring will fit over the end of the forward assist that goes into the receiver. Insert the forward assist with the paw facing towards the inside of the receiver. You would depress the forward assist until you find the proverbial sweet spot this is where you can insert the roll pin to hold the forward assist in place and seat it. After the forward assist, we will put on the dust cover. The dust cover comes with three components, the dust cover, rod, and spring. Insert your rod from the right hand side of the slot and into the right half of the dust cover, but do not push all the way through. The dust cover will have one side with a longer end than the other. Lay it down with the short end to the left and the long end to the right. We will want to add tension to the spring so it will operate the door. Grab the spring's long end, the right side, and twist it clockwise one full rotation. The long leg will be against the dust cover and the short leg will be against the receiver. With the tension in place, slide the rod all the way through to capture the dust cover. Step two, installing the barrel. Uh, we make a whole lot of different barrels here at Tactile Kinetics. Uh, today we're gonna be using a 16 inch 556 uh, mid-length profile barrel. For a full list of the barrels that we produce, go to our website. Now it's time to install the barrel into the upper receiver. Take the bench block and secure it into your vise. Attach the receiver to the block and lock it into place with the action rod or your bolt carrier group. Now you can torque on the receiver and barrel without it moving on you. Insert the barrel into the upper using the pin and the barrel extension to locate it in the open slot in the receiver. Once the barrel is seated, screw on the barrel nut hand tight. The torque spec for a barrel nut is between 35 and 60 pounds. Tighten your barrel nut down using the required specifications using the torque wrench. Step three, installing the gas system. The next step in this process is installing the gas system. The gas system for the AR-15 comes in three components, the gas block, gas tube, and roll pin. Assuming these components are assembled, you will slide the gas block down the barrel and onto the gas journal. You will want to leave the gas block off of the shoulder of the journal about a sixteenth of an inch. This will allow the block to line up with the barrel's gas port. On the bottom of the gas block, you will notice that there are some set screws. Tighten these screws up to set the block into place. You can use Loctite to ensure that these screws do not back out during use. Step 4. Installing the muzzle device. After you have the gas system installed, it is on to the muzzle device. There will be two components in this process, the muzzle device itself and the crush washer. Depending on what kind of muzzle brake you have, some muzzle brakes are self-timing and do not use crush washers, but the one we are using today does. The crush washer will go on before the muzzle device and allow you to torque the device against the barrel. Screw on the muzzle device till you get it hand tight. Using the armorer's wrench, tighten clockwise until tightened in the desired position. The torque specs are between 15 and 25 foot-pounds per square inch. Step 5. Installing the handguard. 
Now, depending on what type of handguard you have, this process can be done in several different ways. The main point in this process is to line up the handguard square with the receiver. Tighten down the screws, hand tight, and you can use Loctite to make sure these screws do not back out. Now you have built an upper receiver. Be sure to test your upper receiver at the range to ensure that you have plenty of gas to move the bolt rearward while firing. If you experience issues, be sure to check the alignment of your gas block against the gas port in the barrel. Be sure to visit tacticalkinetics.com for all your barrel needs and stay tuned for more videos coming soon.